Welcome. Today I would like to talk to you about the first game from the last Bundesliga weekend. Our team played against the team of uh, Oberursel this time. And uh, I played with the black pieces against the German international master Axel Heinz. I can already preview it's going to be a crazy game. And the second game from the same weekend is also going to be a crazy game, which I cover in the next video. Uh, Axel opened with e4 and I don't want to be too predictable and that's why I decided I'm not going to play e4 in the Philidor or second knight c6 again. And so I just uh, went for something else which I thought he would not anticipate. Namely, I played the Karo Khan. <clears throat> yeah, he played this line quite a few times already. So I was preparing for that line and a little bit also for the other lines of the Karo Khan. And um, yeah, indeed we reached a position which I had prepared, namely uh, playing d takes e here and now coming with the move knight to f6. So this is kind of a recent trend in the Karo where you now take this pawn structure, which at the f at first glance looks a little bit odd because here you have four uh, against uh, three, but it also has some advantages. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what we hopefully will also see to some degree in the game here. Um, my opponent played the move g3, which he had played in a game before. So I was uh, kind of expecting that and kind of preparing for that, uh, but it's definitely not the main line. So a more natural developing moves like d4 uh, also suggest themselves. Well, he played g3 and uh, in the game which he played, he actually got a pretty nice position, just finishing development with bishop g2 and castles and so on. And then white is probably slightly better. But here I had a very interesting novelty that I uh, want to play. And that's what I did in the game with a move knight to a6. Um, so after g3, of course, white does no longer want to take on a6 because then just the white squares here become too weak. Um, and if white continues in the normal uh, fashion here by just playing um, bishop to e2, then we see the idea of knight a6. Yeah? So the idea is that I can now go um, queen e7 check. And after the topical queen e2, I can go for knight b4 with direct attack on c2. And uh, white is in a kind of awkward spot here. Yeah? Note that um, even in this position, like after queen e7 check, the computer still says it's uh, it's okay. White can go king f1, and uh, yeah, it's just a freestyle game which then which then starts. Um, but Axel didn't want that, and uh, when I prepared for the game, I also thought, okay, probably he will not go for this because without preparation, this seems a little bit too risky. So instead, he went for the move a3. But now we have included a developing move for me and just this move a3 for him, which uh, of course clearly uh, favors black. And I actually also had prepared uh, a setup against this a3, which was just to go bishop to g4 and uh, queen to d7. Yeah, now I always uh, hint at this possible bishop h3. And it's a little bit awkward for him because he never knows, can I really castle? What happens after bishop h3? What happens after potential plans with h4? h5, h4, and he started spending a lot of time already here. In the end, uh, he settled for the move d3, and uh, I regroup my knight. I do not want to castle in any direction at this point, so I just play my normal developing moves, knight to c7, and now bishop to e7. And only then I can decide in which direction I want to go. And now it's kind of awkward for him to keep up this, this waiting game going, and in the end, he um, yeah, he blinked first, kind of, and he went with short castles. Another option maybe could have been to go for h3 here, but then after after like something like bishop e6, it's not so easy to castle anymore. So uh, yeah, he went for short castles, and uh, yeah, I did what I had seen when I analyzed it a little bit with the computer. Maybe not exactly that position, but kind of the the idea behind it. Just go with uh, h5, h4, and just attack. And yeah, facing this kind of, uh, of an opening as white is of course extremely unpleasant. And I guess for my opponent, um, it was the same. And he, as I said, burned a lot of time in the end settled for queen d2. And I just went on with h4. So in this position, probably white cannot yet take because then I will always have this ideas with bishop h3 and g5. But he went for the move rook fe1, a clever move. Maybe sometimes threatens uh, bishop c5 with some pressure on the king. Yeah, and here, I mean, uh, I have different options. So I saw during the game that maybe objectively the strongest would be to go h3 and then just castles. 
And here it's clear that black is uh, black is better. Black controls the center. Black can come with knight d5 next. Probably get the pair of bishops. Um, but it's going to be a long battle in which black is just um, is just slightly better, I would guess. So I didn't really want that. I, I felt okay. It's time for me to go all out. And so I went with bishop to e6, um, preventing bishop c5 with the idea to then uh, continue with probably long castles or king f8 and uh, continue with the attack. But it turns out that here and in the next move, the computer says, okay, he can actually take now on h4, which is something that we, I think, both didn't really consider seriously because it just looks so risky after something like that. But here now, the point is that the rook has uh, this e-file and something like bishop h3 in some cases is met with the bishop c5 move. So it turns out that probably I don't have enough attack. So I mean, it still can kind of continue like something like that. And I mean, even this, I think, looks pretty, pretty risky for white, but the computer says it's actually, actually good. And I could also, for instance, go with something like that and that. But in any case, the computer says that white is better. So what he did in the game is uh, perfectly understandable. He wanted to restrict this knight and so went with a move c4. Um, perfectly logical, I would say. And now I, I still face the dilemma in which way I want to develop. And um, in the end, I settled for the most ambitious try with king to f8. But again, he could have taken now and computer says it's defendable. He didn't do so, but instead went for a queen to c3. Um, with the idea of exchanging queens on, on d4. But that's a little bit slow. So I now just took and went with my plan to go bishop to h3. And here I felt, uh, I felt like I'm doing really well. I mean, if he takes, I take back. Uh, maybe he has something like queen d2, queen g2. And maybe it's not like not that I'm directly winning or anything, but it's definitely easier to play for black and at least comfortably equal. And after what he did in the game, um, queen d4, I felt that this queen is not really placed too well here. I can just go away to c8. And now it, um, the queen can no longer retreat so easily to d2 and to g2. And he's missing one defender here on the second rank. Yeah, I think still he should probably have continued in a different way than what he did in the game, um, which is uh, bishop to f2, because this is now just um, yeah too risky in terms of the, the king's safety. I took, took, and I went for queen to h3. And here, here I felt I'm, I'm just completely winning, to be honest. Um, but it turns out that things are not so simple. Okay, I thought I'd go knight e6, maybe next move something like this, like this, maybe g5, g4. And um, yeah, I'm going to be just easily winning. But he surprised me now with his move queen to d7. One point is that I can no longer easily move my knight because of this um, position of the queens. And the other point is that b7 is hanging. And here now I started thinking for way too long, I burned basically all of my remaining time, such that now on move 21, we were both on this 30 um, second increment and was clear that it's going to be um, a time scramble. In the end, after a long, long thing, I couldn't find anything forcing, and also the computer doesn't have a very, very forcing line here. Um, maybe suggest something like g5, but it's also not so easy. Instead, I settled for this move rook to b8, which I think was a good practical choice, because it forces him to take um, another very difficult decision. The very cold blooded computer now actually takes here and takes here um, and yeah still says that the position is extremely risky for white after something like bishop d6 but kind of manages to defend it uh, in some way so instead uh, he didn't dare to take these two pawns which looks extremely risky to a human but played a more human move the move a rook to d2 a rook to e2 And here I found a move which I'm quite proud of. I think it was a very nice uh, idea here, namely to go with the move uh, queen to h5. And the idea is that I will first lure him to to uh, g2. And in case he goes to g2, I have this move queen, g, queen g4 threatening this check and queen takes d7. So 
he saw that and for that reason now defended this knight uh, with the only other possible way by playing uh, rook to e3 but now um, after bishop c5 it just looks as though black is completely winning yeah i'm threatening uh, to take the rook if the rook moves i can just take the knight and therefore he has no choice but to go with the move d4 and here i went with rook to d8 attacking the queen takes yeah and now it, it's evident that that black is just completely winning there are different ways uh, of actually doing so um i started my calculation with uh, knight to d4 but then after takes i can't really take back with the bishop because of queen e7 queen d8 so i would have had to go for something like that takes check and something like king e1 and during the game this was very hard for me to evaluate <laughs> a cold-blooded computer goes g6 and says something like plus uh, plus six for me or minus six so um which is of course imaginable but which is not easy to to calculate so instead i went with a bishop takes d4 which should also be completely winning um and yeah, now he went with a bishop, uh, rook b3. I took this guy and he took back. Yeah, and, and here still in time scramble, I played the move g5. Probably it was better to go g6, also creating luft for the king, but keeping the options of the queen uh, to go potentially go to c5 open, which um, yeah seems to be preferable. In any case, I went g5, all out attack. And he now countered with rook e1. And I uh, yeah, probably should have played this move according to the computer, which also doesn't look very human because after takes it looks that I just blundered a piece. But the computer continues with g4 and says uh, black is winning. Well, uh, I think this is not possible to see as a human. So instead uh, I went in time scrambles with knight to d4. With the idea if he takes i can take on h2 and then it's over but of course he doesn't have to take play to rook d3 and now i just defended the knight with uh, c5 yeah and during the game i was absolutely not sure what's going on here uh it still looked to me as though white has to be careful because of something like takes and takes here um but white is actually relatively quick so he played uh, rook e7 putting pressure on f7 and potentially also threatening a move like g4. I played uh, king g7 with the idea of probably meeting g4 with just uh, queen to g6. And there is no direct uh, threat that white has. In the game, uh, I was now expecting that he takes. I'll probably just have taken back. And then, yeah, I would probably have to go for a king, a queen h2 at some point, maybe. Um, not exchange queens and and continue this um, this sort of an end game where the white king is a bit more vulnerable, but it's definitely still a quite quite a complex position. Instead, he played this move rook d3, which totally caught me off guard uh, with uh, 30 seconds uh, for the next move. And maybe you can now pause the video for 30 seconds and think about what black could do here. Well. As you see, it's not so easy to calculate all the lines in uh, 30 seconds. Um, during the game, I was first calculating knight f5. And then after like g4, uh, I would have to take. And after takes, um, I calculated king g6, but this seemed way too risky for me because I don't even have a, a very clear threat. Yeah. Um, probably upon closer examination, I have something like Rook, rook, uh, h2 or rook d2 um, and it's extremely risky because he might take on f6 or he might have something like a knight e5 check and to see that like three moves prior is basically um, almost impossible in on 30 seconds so um, then i started calculating the move knight to f3 however there i just saw the line takes takes and rook e7 and here I missed uh, the crucial detail that I could just go knight e5 and black is actually winning. So probably after knight f3 he would have to take back and then I get a better version of uh, what I just mentioned that I can take here 
and go for something like rook d2 check. It's not immediately over, but it's definitely um, just clearly better for black. Um, and actually there was another move which was winning in that position for black, namely to just go rook to b8. And after something like g4, I can now just take take and go rook b2. And that's also, yeah, I also completely missed that um, in the end. So yeah, after panicking for 30 seconds, uh, I ultimately settled for the move rook hf8, protecting on f7, because I thought, okay, at least I'm not gonna lose in this way. Um, and uh, yeah, it turns out that rook hf8 is actually also a pretty, uh, pretty decent move. He went for queen e4, centralizing the queen. And I now just took on f3, takes. And yeah, here I could have taken on h2 and go back to uh, h7, but I wanted to play it a little bit more, you know, um, with the initiative. Uh, and I went for the move g4 instead, which is also perfectly fine. And after queen g2, I was still in uh, serious time trouble and uh, I played the move queen f5 check, but it turns out that this would have been a bit more precise just to go um, for this. And it's very, very awkward to defend if the king is still on f2. You know, he will lose one more tempo and this turns out to be uh, to be crucial if we ask the machine. But of course, this is also not uh, easy to evaluate as, uh, as completely winning. So um, yeah, instead I went for queen f5 and now for rook d d1 check, rook d8. And yeah, after uh, queen f2, I was still in time trouble and I started calculating queen b1, which is the most logical move. But then I thought, okay, first of all, maybe he can go for king, king g2, I'm not sure, but also he maybe can just take, uh, take and go for king g2 and I don't have anything uh, particularly concrete. Um, the machine says that this is still completely winning for black because of the exposed uh, king here, just going for something like that and queen d3 and slowly but surely taking white's pawns. But of course, this is also not uh, particularly easy to see on increment. So instead I, yeah, now kind of panicked and traded down, um, taking here and taking here. And I now uh, realized that <laughs> Actually, we reached the time control, but uh, I don't have any advantage anymore. And so unfortunately, the game uh, ended by a repetition of moves. Kind of an anticlimactic um, end of this game, where I had all the winning chances in the world. But uh, I think the reason why I didn't win the game was very poor time management that I took so long for playing Rook B8. Uh, because afterwards these lines were like really relatively complicated to calculate and um, if i had three four minutes more then i think it would have been a decent chance that i would find them but uh, being so low on time it was just um yeah, i just didn't manage to do that um which is maybe also a lack of lack of skill there but um i think mostly lack of of time management before um, when i still had logical moves to play i started to think uh, way too long in any case, um, it resulted in the, the match being tied three and a half, three and a half with one game going. And unfortunately, our player also overpressed in the final game. And uh, we ended up losing this match with four and a half to three and a half, which I think was in no way representative of how the match went. But um, yeah, sometimes it's like this. We also had some luck in other matches this season. So I think in the end, it kind of cancels out. And um, yeah, I hope that we don't play another match like that in this season. Well, that's it for me today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the game. Uh, it was still, of course, a very, very fun game to play with all these complications, even though, of course, in the end, I was slightly disappointed of not having um, finished off what could have been uh, actually a very, very um, instructive attack. All right. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.